Virtually all diurnal birds of prey species are obligate carnivores, meaning they only feed on the meat of other animals. As examined in a previous video, however, there are exceptions to this rule, most notably the palm nut vulture, an African species of vulture well known to feed heavily on fruits and seeds, as well as feeding on live and scavenged prey. There are other species of raptors that have retained their mostly carnivorous nature, but have become specially adapted for feeding on a particular food source that is quite unusual even by the standards of this unique family of birds. Certain species of raptors do hunt insects, particularly smaller species like this falconet, often catching flying invertebrates on the wing, but there is a group of much larger raptors feeding on a particular source of insect prey, which has led them to become much more specialised in both their behaviour and their anatomy to suit this particular food source. Most famous amongst these birds are of course the honey buzzards. There are numerous species referred to by this name, with the two best known temperate species being the crested honey buzzard and the European honey buzzard pictured here. In the UK, the honey buzzard is a migratory species, flying south to spend the winter in Africa while returning north to Britain and Europe to breed during the summer. It is also one of the rarest species of birds of prey observed in the UK. At first glance, this bird does have some similarities to the more familiar common buzzard, a species of similar size and with comparable flight behaviours. After all, both raptors have long broad wings and are frequently observed soaring around at great height. However, despite appearances and their namesake, honey buzzards are not in fact true buzzards, or indeed part of the Buteo family, and are in fact more closely related to the bird of prey family known as kites, including the infamous red kite and others like the black and yellow billed kites. When in flight, the honey buzzard can be distinguished from the similar sized common buzzard by a number of different physical attributes, including its marginally longer tail and dark wrist patches on the underside of its wings. Many individuals, especially mature birds, also appear to be more heavily streaked or barred underneath, with a more horizontally stripy appearance compared to the common buzzard. The European honey buzzard is perhaps even more distinctive when it is perched, and their facial appearance is a dead giveaway in distinguishing them from other raptors like the common buzzard. Unlike the common buzzard and other members of the Buteo family, which typically have brown eyes, honey buzzards have bright yellow or orange eyes, and a mature European honey buzzards often have a greyish cap on the top of their head. The comparatively small and delicate looking head and bill of the honey buzzard can look almost like that of a pigeon or even a cuckoo from a distance, quite distinct from the comparatively more stocky appearance of other similar sized raptors. Honey buzzards may lack the size and power of a raptor like a large eagle, and they may not be as fast or as dynamic as a larger falcon, but in many ways they are quite underrated within the bird of prey world, as they are in fact specialised to hunt killer prey, prey that many more famous raptor species wouldn't touch. As their name suggests, Honey buzzards are unusually apivorous, which is defined as an animal having a taste for bees and wasps. They will predate a wide range of insects, but they are clearly most commonly associated with insects belonging to the order known as Hymenoptera, which includes bees, wasps and hornets. Taking on a colony of these eusocial insects is far from an easy feat, for these comparatively tiny prey items can certainly pack a punch. Depending on the species, colony sizes of these insects can range between a couple of hundred to up to 80,000 individuals. To single-handedly attack an active nest containing bees, wasps or especially hornets would be painful or even dangerous to many predators. The sheer number of these defensive insects is of course only made worse because of their painful stingers. Honeybees of course are well known for dying after stinging only once, because their barbed stinger becomes stuck in the skin, often leading to the honeybee thus dismembering itself as it pulls away from the stinger lodged in the enemy. This isn't a problem for wasps and their relatives the hornets however, for their stingers are smooth, not barbed, so they can sting an enemy repeatedly, injecting more venom. To make matters worse for the would-be attacker, 
Individual insects from the nest going on the defensive will release a chemical pheromone into the air, triggering more members of the colony to attack in unison, potentially leading to a swarm that can overwhelm virtually any predator. Unsurprisingly then, many species take heed not to disturb a nest of such formidable invertebrates, but honey buzzards, whatever the species, certainly aren't among them. In fact, these birds will very brazenly approach active hives and land on them whether they are in the trees or on the ground, grabbing at the nest structure with their taloned feet and ripping out large chunks of material while masses of angry insects swarm all around them. This would be a dire situation for many, but the honey buzzard seems almost completely unfazed and unharmed during this ordeal. This is because the honey buzzard has a range of physical adaptations that enable it to raid the nests of these insects with minimal or even no harm to itself. Honey buzzards, including the oriental or crested honey buzzard as pictured here, have well-developed feet and talons, particularly when compared to that of their close relatives, the kites, which have small feet and talons compared to other birds of prey. The thick scales on their toes and lower legs can help protect them from the stings of angry bees and wasps. When attacking a nest consisting of bees, wasps or hornets, honey buzzards appear to do so in slightly different ways. Sometimes they will land directly on a nest and begin tearing into it, or they will approach a somewhat more smash and grab technique, especially when a swarm is intense in the initial stages of attack. In this way, they will repeatedly fly directly at the nest, making off with as much nest material they can grab with each flyby. The feathers of the honey buzzard are a key feature in protecting the bird from the attacks of the swarming insects during a nest raid. Honey buzzards, as seen from this oriental or crested honey buzzard pictured here, have especially thick neck and throat feathers, making it especially difficult for individual bees or wasps to land a sting in these vulnerable areas. In fact, most of the honey buzzard's plumage throughout its body acts almost like a kind of body armour, with the feathers tightly overlapping with each other and making it especially hard for individual insects to land a sting. The smooth plumage on the bird's back also seems quite difficult for some insects to cling on to. Unlike most other bird of prey species, which generally have fairly rounded nostrils, honey buzzards are one of the few species with very narrow slit-like nostrils. This is an adaptation likely used to prevent potential bees and wasps trying to fly up the nasal passages and sting vulnerable internal structures, which is an attack strategy honeybees have been known to utilise. Honey buzzards also possess a nictating membrane, that characteristic third eyelid found in birds, reptiles and some mammals. This translucent membrane blinks across the eye horizontally, almost like a windshield wiper, and the honey buzzard will frequently use this feature to protect its eyes when in the midst of a swarm of angry bees, wasps or hornets. On top of all of these unique adaptations aiding the honey buzzard in these death-defying raids, their protective and unique plumage is covered with a special substance which is believed to act like a chemical deterrent. There are cases where honey buzzards will descend on a nest of bees or wasps, and the insect occupants don't always seem to retaliate as aggressively as expected. Whether this substance interferes with the chemical pheromones released by the insects used to communicate, or whether the bird's plumage emits a chemical odour that is unpleasant to the insects is not fully understood, but either way, it only seems to add to the bird's effectiveness during a raid. However, it is not so much honey that this bird is out to feed on, contrary to what its name may suggest, but rather the developing larvae and pupae in the combs of the nest itself. Once it finds a comb full of these tasty morsels, the honey buzzard will utilise its unusually delicate looking beak to pick out individual larvae from the nest cells with surgical precision, which its beak seems almost perfectly shaped to do so. With all of these remarkable and unique adaptations, the honey buzzard seems near perfectly adapted for a life of apivory, feeding on a wide range of hymenopteran insect species, even the most formidable, including the Asian giant hornet whose nests are sometimes plundered by oriental honey buzzards, for example. 
These insects form a large part of the honey buzzard's diet, particularly in the spring and summer, but they will also feed on other insects as well as small mammals, birds, reptiles and amphibians if this standard food source becomes scarce, making them quite adaptable despite their obvious specialisation. However, it turns out that the honey buzzard family is not alone in this regard, as there is another species of diurnal raptor known to engage in apivorous behaviour. On another side of the bird of prey family tree are the caracaras. There are around nine individual species of caracara alive today, and although they often resemble hawks, they are in fact part of the falconidae family. The best known species from this group is almost certainly the crested caracara pictured here, alongside the striated or Falkland Islands caracara. There is, however, one particular species within this group that until recently was not as well understood or studied, and maybe even more specialised than these previously mentioned species, the somewhat peculiar looking red-throated caracara. This medium-sized raptor is found throughout Central and South America, favouring tropical forested habitats including the Amazon. Much like other caracara species, the red-throated caracara is an intelligent and highly social bird, often travelling in groups ranging between four and eight individuals. They are, however, quite territorial birds, and do not seem to tolerate other groups marauding on their territory. In forested and jungle habitats, these caracaras primarily hunt in the canopy and understory of the forest, and much like the aforementioned honey buzzards, and unlike their caracara relatives, a large portion of their natural diet consists of the larvae from bees and wasps. The Amazon is home to many unique species of bees and wasps, including, for example, numerous kinds of paper wasp, creating large nests on overhanging branches, with a number of species said to possess one of the most painful stings known to man. And yet even these fearsome little opponents are not enough to deter a hungry red-throated caracara. Until 2013, very little was actually known about the feeding behaviour of this particular raptor species, until they were scientifically observed by a team of Canadian biologists from the University of Simon Fraser. It seems that these birds use a combination of cunning, teamwork and agility to override the insect's defences. Upon finding a wasp nest, the caracaras were observed to utilise a rapid-fire fly-by aerial attack strategy, where they would repeatedly fly at the nest at speed and strike at it with their taloned feet, intending to rip off large pieces of comb with each attack, or to simply knock it to the forest floor, all the while making a quick getaway to avoid the stinging insects. The group of caracaras would work together, described as using air squadron precision, repeatedly diving and then swooping upwards, likely intending to drive off or confuse the defensive swarms. In the majority of cases, after such a continuous barrage of attacks, the wasps would abandon their severely damaged nest to start anew, leaving the vulnerable larvae and pupae in the combs of the nest unprotected. With the soft and nutritious larvae exposed, the caracaras are then able to gorge on their prize unaffected with these birds even seeming to adopt a similar bill shape to the aforementioned honey buzzard, better shaped to pry tasty morsels from the cells of wasp nests. Although this unique species of caracara is by no means closely related to the honey buzzard family, it has a remarkably similar dietary biology overall, with most of its diet consisting of bees and wasps, followed by other insects, and even occasionally fruits and berries. While its physical adaptations for apivory don't seem to be as obvious as those of the honey buzzard family, it certainly manages to hunt these fearsome little prey items through a combination of intelligence, teamwork, and probably most of all, tenacity, making it a likely equally effective hunter, fulfilling an ecological hunting niche left vacant in the new world, considering that the aforementioned honey buzzards aren't found in the Americas. There is another species of bird of prey worth discussing that has an equally if not even more specialised way of life, especially when regarding its choice of prey, that being the snail kite. This unusual species can be found in Central and South America, as well as in Central and Southern Florida in the United States. As its name suggests, 
The snail kite is usually placed under the category of milvine kites, that including more famous species like the red kite, for example, but the validity of that grouping is still under investigation. A more obvious detail derived from its common name is the diet of this bird, that being of course snails, which is why the snail kite is frequently referred to as being a molluscivore. More specifically, the bulk of the snail kite's diet consists of freshwater apple snails, which are abundant especially in the Florida Everglades, one of its main strongholds. In Florida, at least three different species of freshwater apple snails are known to make up its diet, with a few other species known to be consumed in other areas of its range. Whatever the species, freshwater snails like these make up the majority of the snail kite's diet, though they have been known to occasionally feed on crayfish and other small crustaceans, as well as the occasional freshwater reptile given the chance, though this usually occurs only during times of drought. For the snail kite, capturing individual snails is usually pretty easy. After all, these prey items are pretty small and slow moving, with the main challenge being spotting the prey items in the right place at the right time, and then prying them from the water, often accompanied by tangled underwater vegetation. Snail kites have pretty large, broad wings, which combined with their lightweight build, gives them a relatively low wing loading, making them especially buoyant in flight, and able to hover with impressive precision over the surface of the water. They also have proportionally quite long legs, and long grasping talons and feet, which are well adapted for entering the water and grasping hold of slippery snail shells, often while the bird itself is still beating its wings to keep above the surface, before it is then able to make off with its prize. The most distinctive and unique adaptation about the snail kite, however, is of course its unusually shaped beak. The pointed beak is curved but very narrow, especially compared to other bird of prey species, as observed in both adults and juveniles. It's just the right shape to fit inside a snail's shell and extract the tasty mollusk hiding within, thus discarding the shell and swallowing its meal whole. With such refined equipment towards a specific prey like this, it's little wonder that the snail kite rarely eat anything else. However, its specialised feeding nature does not mean that this species is unable to adapt to change. In the early 2000s, an invasive species of apple snail began to spread across the wetlands of Florida. This new species of snail was five times larger than the average snail species usually preyed upon by snail kites. At the time, many snail kites were incapable of feeding on this new giant snail, and as a result, they suffered a serious population decline. But a decade later, their population swiftly recovered, their numbers tripling to over 2,000 individuals. At this point, they were also consuming more of these larger invasive snails, with noticeable changes from their previous forebears. It turns out that this new generation of snail kites were around 12% larger, with noticeably bigger beaks compared to previous generations. It seems to be that a handful of individuals with these traits were initially able to hunt this larger source of prey, and then they passed on these traits to their offspring after breeding, enabling the species as a whole to recover in this localised area by physically growing in size to adapt to the new food source. In less than two snail kite generations, this species was able to rapidly adapt to a change in its environment, making slight changes to its original morphology in an incredibly short span of time, one of the most rapid examples of adaptation in the avian world. It just goes to show that even somewhat specialised species feeding on a particular food source can be surprisingly adaptable towards changes in the environment. The three examples of raptor species in this video also help to highlight how birds of prey of all kinds have diversified to adapt to a range of different ecological niches across the globe and to hunt many different kinds of prey in many unexpected ways, including these ones, making them one of the most impressive and successful species of birds on the planet.